Hello everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Phenomenal Views. Of course, I am your host, Nick Smith, and this is my review for Sharknado 2, the second one. Now, before I even get into anything, of course, I'm going to go into spoilers. I don't care. This video is going to be a dedication to my friend Dustin McRae, my friend Brandon Davis, my friend Kayla McReynolds, my friend Matt, um, Matt Hughes, for some reason I want to say Lewis, and my friend Kayla McReynolds, these are the guys that came into MacU with me when I did, and I sadly do not get to graduate with them. They are graduating today, and I'm going to make this review for them a dedication. So, Sharknado 2, the second one. Wow. This movie is so fun to watch. I I'm not even kidding. The first one, like... You know what you're getting into. This one, oh my gosh, they they threw everything in this movie and the kitchen sink. This movie is Cameo City. Okay, so, the plot is, they don't say how long it's been since the first Sharknado, Finn's a hero, and Tara Reid's character somehow was smart enough to write a book on how to survive a Sharknado, and so another Sharknado is coming, but this one, there's only like a Sharknado like at the end of the movie. This one should be called Sharknado 2 Shark Storm. They should have called it Shark Storm because that's what this is. The Sharknado doesn't show up until like the end of the movie or at least not to like the climax. And this movie should have really just been called Shark Storm because it's raining sharks. How does this happen? This is not a regular thing, everyone. And like when I say this movie is Cameo City, we have the Jared the Subway guy, which by the way, this movie promotes Subway like a couple of times. It's got Jared the Subway guy. It's got that one patient from Scrubs who always thinks he's sick. It has <laughs> It's got Al and Matt from the Today Show. It has Kelly and What's-His-Face. This movie is just fun to watch. And this one's not a... This one is not a train wreck. This is a... I don't know what you call this, but this movie is just so fun. It is so fun to watch because of how dumb it is. Okay, now... The acting in this movie is actually not bad. Tara Reid still gives the same robotic performance, just like Kristen Stewart, and that, yes, that is a joke from the Nostalgia Critic. She gives them the same performance. Their kids are not in this one. <laughs> I, I, I could not... There was not one point in this movie where I did not laugh, and I would say, that's not how that works! That doesn't make any sense! This is not a regular thing! What are you doing here?! <laughs> Okay, so if there, if anyone is a wrestling fan in my, uh, from my fans, or if anyone who is watching this is a wrestling fan, or if Dustin or them are watching this, here's my reaction. I gave the same reaction that Triple H gave when Sting debuted, and he was like, "What the heck are you doing here?" You, you know, you know. Hold, hold on, just just one second. There is a there's a certain person in this movie who makes an appearance, and I have no idea why, but this is basically my reaction. Kurt Angle, what are you doing here? Why are you in this movie? Yeah. Kurt Angle, the Olympic gold medalist, TNA wrestler is in this movie. I want to be in Sharknado 4 if they ever make one. I mean, it was like, did everyone just love Sharknado or did they just get a bunch of people going, hey, we need to promote this movie. We're going all out. We don't care. We're following the same th plot line or the, we're following the same thing of Power Rangers in space. You know what? We're going to throw it all out there. We're giving it our best. This is honestly, in my opinion, the best Asylum movie I have ever seen. Because, oh gosh. I could watch this movie over and over and over. I could watch the first one over and over. I laugh more at this one, though. <laughs> and... <laughs> there's a scene with, a, with them at the baseball field. 
and the guy who's who's from Scrubs, who plays the sick patient, used to be a baseball star. A shark is coming at him. He takes a baseball bat and he hits it and he makes a home run. I'm like, no, Th that's not how that would happen. That is not how that would happen. And when Finn is looking for his his weapon, his his trusty weapon, a chainsaw. They're in this cab, and he's like, "We we need weapons. Uh, we need guns. There's no gun stores in New York." Really? So New York, the place with so many stores, so many thrift stores. You can find anything in New York. You can find bootleg DVDs of movies that aren't even in theaters yet. I'm pretty sure you can find a gun there. I looked up on Google. There was like three stores. I, I guess in the Sharknado universe. Uh, uh, I guess guns aren't allowed. I, I don't know. And then he's like, well, uh, I need a chainsaw. Chainsaws? There's no hardware stores in Manhattan. Or he's like, there's no hard stores in New York. Okay. Okay, whatever. <laughs> and when earlier when Finn's in an interview and this guy's looking at him like he's crazy and I was like I'm pretty sure that if a <laughs> a sharknado were to happen, everyone would know about it. It would be world freaking wide. It would be like the zombie apocalypse. There wouldn't be someone in some foreign country who wouldn't know what was going on because they would broadcast that everywhere. In, in Man of Steel, when Zod was coming down to the planet, it was televised everywhere. Everywhere. So if an alien coming down from space is televised everywhere, I'm pretty sure something that would not ever happen, a Sharknado would be televised everywhere. I mean, unless this guy's either the dumbest person in Sharknado history or in the Sharknado universe, like there are a couple dumb people in the Power Rangers universe. I don't know. <laughs> but I I'm serious. This movie is so bad, but they don't care. They're having fun making this movie. They know it's a dumb idea, but they just don't care. And it looks like everyone who cameos is having fun. Matt and Al are obviously having fun because they're killing a shark in the newsroom and they're still live and they're like, we're, we're live? We're live? Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for staying through this. Now back to your original programming. Okay, I don't think that would happen in real life. I mean, none of this would happen in real life, but the fact of the matter is, this is my favorite Asylum movie. I've not watched Sharknado 3. I'm gonna watch that soon. But oh my gosh. The, the cameos are hilarious. The characters are funny. The only one who's irritable as Tara Reid, but she's actually, she's not in the movie this much. So, I, I don't know, maybe maybe people complained about her in the movie and they took her out for a little while, I don't know. Finn's kind of grown as a character, I guess you could say. In this one, he's fixing his friendship with his sister's husband, because they used to be best friends, but now they're not, so there's another problem for him to fix. Like I said, their kids aren't in this. And, okay, there is a there's a scene that's kind of like from Snakes on a Plane where the anaconda was hiding up in the roof or in the lights or whatever, or, or, or whatever in the ceiling. Uh, when a girl goes to, a, to the bathroom in this movie, after Finn leaves, she starts to sniff. She's like... And I was like, wait, no, no. And then a shark from that was hiding in the ceiling or something comes out and eats her head off. And I was just like, there, there are no words. I know I should be, I'm mentally drained from this, but I'm, I've been laughing so hard that I haven't gotten time to notice. I like this one better than the first, just because they ham it up so much in this movie 
more than the first one. And it's just so fun to watch. Yeah, this movie's a freaking... Uh, this movie is a bombshell. But like I said in the first one, you want to turn your head and not look, but you just can't. And they they talk about how we're the bit... Oh, Finn talks about how when he saved people in L.A., apparently people didn't take it. They didn't thank him. Okay, I'm going to call bull crap, but whatever. Uh, but the guy in New York's like, well, this is the Big Apple. When something bites us, we bite back. And I was like, yeah, you guys survived the Avengers. You guys survived Zilla. I'm not calling it Godzilla because we know that's not what it is. They've survived the apocalypse from I Am Legend. Everything happens in New York. So, yeah, New York is fine. And they come up with a they come up with a new way of how to get bombs into the into the Sharknado. That involves a water balloon machine. You you guys just have to watch this movie. I, I I'm done. But guys, put in the comments below if you've watched Sharknado two. What was your favorite part about it? What was your favorite cameo? I would really like to know, guys. I'm enjoying these movies so much. Oh my gosh. This movie has more ham than Ponyo. Thank you, Doug Walker, for that joke. Guys, have a good day. Don't forget to hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to share this video. And thank you for making this video. Or thank you for making this my channel grow. The only reason that my YouTube channel is the way it is is because of you, my fans, and those who have subscribed. Thank you so much. And I hope that you guys are enjoying a good day and enjoy your summer. Because we got more shark movies coming up. Have a good day, guys.